Please stand and join in singing our gathering hymn, In Via Tu Espiritu, found in the Glory and Praise hymnal number 407. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit, coming near and dwelling graciously within us, may make of us a temple, a perfect temple of his glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, please be seated. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the lands, and bring you back to your own soil. I will sprinkle clean water over you to make you clean. From all your impurities and from all your idols, I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I will put within you. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you so that you will walk in my statutes, observe my ordinances, and keep them. You will live in the land I gave to your ancestors. You will be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Please join in singing the responsorial psalm, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. In him you also have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is the first installment of our inheritance toward redemption as God's possession, to the praise of his glory. Therefore, I, too, hearing of your faith in the Lord Jesus and of your love for all the holy ones, do not cease giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him, May the eyes of your own hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Now I am going to the one who sent me, and not one of you asks me, Where are you going? But because I told you this, grief has filled your hearts. But I tell you the truth, it is better for you that I go. For if I do not go, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Can I please ask the Confirmandi to please stand? All of you stand, please. Bishop, I present to you the Confirmandi from Our Lady of Grace, Our Lady of Peace, and here at St. James. And I attest to you that they have been well catechized and are well disposed to receive this sacrament this evening. My friends, let's give them a round of applause for approval. Okay, my young friends, sit and relax. My dear friends, I actually saw her face only twice in 18 months. The first time was my very first day of work as the sales representative for McGraw Hill. She was my most important customer. And when I arrived at her school in Midtown Manhattan, buzzed into the school, we greeted each other in the hall, and obviously, whatever she saw, she did not like. For every month after that, when I would pay my visit, the same thing would happen. I needed to be buzzed in so she knew it was me. She usually was in the hall. As soon as I entered into the hall, she turned around and started walking towards her office, which was at the very end of the hall. And I was trying to have a conversation, but of course I could only see her back, until she actually got to her, ho to her office and I would try to catch up when she would slam the door in my face didn't do great stuff for my self-esteem, but she was my most important customer. I tell you this because during this time, when I was working, I was also discerning my vocation again, having been in the seminary, left, and discerning whether I was to go back. And I learned a life lesson, my young friends, that God sometimes gives you what you want to figure out what you need. And I had to come to the understanding what I needed to do is say yes to what he asked of me. So I did. And I told my district manager I was going to go back to the seminary, and he said to me, before you leave, go to so-and-so and tell her yourself. So I arrived at the school, same ritual, coming down the hall, She's just about to slam the door, and I finally literally screamed it out. I said, by the way, I'm leaving. And she stopped. And she entered back into the hall, and this time looked at me again, second time I saw her face. And she said to me, I knew it. From the first time I saw you, you didn't have what it took to do this job. And then because we're in church, I'm going to clean up what she said next, okay? And then she said, who is stupid enough to hire you? 
And my friends, it was a moment of grace. I, I didn't even think. It just, I just blurted it out. I said, Jesus. And the most remarkable thing happened. For 18 months, I saw this woman hunched over, always in a rush, always with such great tension. I could literally see the blood coming out of her face. She didn't scream. She barely whispered. She said, what did you just say? I said, I'm going back to the seminary. I'm going to be a priest. And this time, she slammed her door open. She said to her secretary, hold my calls, cancel those meetings. And she said to me, you come with me. First and only time I saw her office. I sat across for her, my friends, for two hours. I did not say five words in two hours. And she felt compelled to tell me her story. A life where she was materially wealthy beyond any of our imaginations. And yet a life that was betrayed, a life that was wounded, a life that was just so much in suffering. And she kind of gave me half a compliment, and off I went, and I was standing on 7th Avenue, and I was thinking to myself, what just happened? What just happened? And then a line of scripture came to mind. It's the line I want to share with you, my young friends. It comes from the writings of St. Paul. In the letter to the Philippians, Paul writes, at the name of Jesus, Every knee shall bend in the heavens, on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. The power of the name of Jesus. Why do I tell you that tonight? Because, my young friends, whether you realize it or not, you are here because as a young adult, in about six or seven minutes, I'm going to ask you to stand up and claim the name of Jesus for yourself. It was given for you on the day of your baptism. You are called a Christian, Jesus the Christ. But now you have the opportunity to stand up and claim it for yourself, confirming your baptism. And you will join the ranks of all of us in this church who are older, although I am not old, older, who go out into that world and live that name. I can tell you many stories in my life of how the power of Jesus has transformed people's lives. You will have that same opportunity with the power of the Holy Spirit. Because, my young friends, I wish I could tell you, as you grow older, it gets easier. It does not. The older you get, the more complicated it gets, the harder it is at times. So the Spirit's coming so that you may carry that name with all of its power and opportunity and change the world one person, one choice at a time. So you may say, okay, Bishop, that sounds really nice. You can put it on a poster, hang it up in church. It's great, beautiful. But what does it mean? You talk about the name of Jesus, and, but what does that actually mean? Like, how is my life going to be different tomorrow or next week or next year or 10 years from now? What is it really going, what difference will it really make in my life? And to answer that question, my young friends, it's the same question I'm asking everyone in this church, myself included. It will only change your life if you allow the Spirit to change your life one choice at a time, but I can paint you the picture of what a Christian who carries the name of Jesus in all its power and majesty, what that life looks like. First and foremost, it's a young man or a young woman who's not afraid to tell the truth with respect. It's someone who is willing not necessarily to go with the flow, or just follow what the group says, or do what's politically correct, or what happens to be the opinion of the day. It's a young person, old person, any person, who carries his name, who recognizes that he who is the master said to us, I 
I am the truth. And that truth you know in sacred scripture, what your parents are teaching you in so many other ways. Is it easy to do that? No. But a Christian with power of the Holy Spirit can do it one choice at a time. What does a Christian look like? It's a person whose heart beats with compassion and mercy, that doesn't look at the poor or the immigrant or the disabled or the unemployed or the depressed or those who have no one and no friend. You don't look at them as if they're problems to be solved. You and I actually say they have names, they have lives, they have families, and they're my sister and brother. And we work together as best we can to be able to meet their needs. That's not easy, but that's what a Christian does with the name of Jesus. What does a Christian look like? You know, my young friends, I said to you, I don't understand your world. I don't. I'm 65 years old. But this much I do know. A Christian online, a Christian in social media, would never cancel somebody else out because they disagree with them or because they don't share their religion or politics or skin color or... Never. The Lord Jesus extended his arms on the cross because he was embracing everyone of every color, race, language, nationality, saints and sinners alike. We're all God's children, all of us. And a Christian lives like that, even when the world tempts you to have vengeance, to hold a grudge, to divide or to cancel, you will say no, as we will say no. To live a life like that on your own is awfully hard. But the Spirit's coming to help you. Because the truth is, my young friends, your destiny is to build a life of greatness. And you do that by the choices you and I make. And with the gift of the Holy Spirit, you'll begin to make some hard choices so that what will happen? People will look into your eyes and say, she's someone that I believe. He's someone I can follow. He's a person that I know if he asks me to do something, he'll be standing next to me and doing it with me. You, my young friends, are inheriting a world that needs a lot of help. And that help will come from the power of the Holy Spirit and for Christians of every age to carry that name into that world and unleash its power, one person, one choice at a time. You know what, my friends? I left that school totally amazed, and I must make a public confession. I didn't think much about, like she never came to mind after I went to the seminary. I got involved with all the stuff that seminaries are involved with. I hadn't really thought of her. And it was years later, believe it or not, on the day that I received the call 18 years ago when the Pope had asked me to become an auxiliary bishop of Brooklyn. And the first question that was asked of me was, what motto do you wish, the motto that is part of the insignia of the office? And without thinking, I immediately said, Jesus Christ is Lord. And only afterwards did I realize that motto was her gift to me. For in her witness, she helped me to understand the power of the name of Jesus. And I have prayed for her every day since. You, my young friends, have your whole life ahead of you. Do not be afraid to be great and carry the name you have with dignity for the rest of your life. Congratulations. And may God bless you, my young friends, all the days of your life. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Those to be confirmed, may I ask you please to stand? So my young friends, before you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to ask you now to renew the promises of your baptism. I will ask you five questions, and if you are truly ready, please respond by saying, I do. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered death and was buried, who rose from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, who is the Lord and giver of life, who came upon the apostles at Pentecost and today will come upon you in the sacrament of confirmation? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. Mask everyone please to stand. So my dear friends, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these his adopted sons and daughters born to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. My young friends to be confirmed, I'm gonna ask you please to kneel. <coughs> Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May I ask everyone please to be seated. Gabriel, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Gabriel, peace be with you. Congratulations to you. God bless you. Rosa, Rose, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Rose, peace be with you. God bless you. Congratulations. Cecilia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Cecilia, peace be with you. God bless you. Congratulations. Cecilia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Cecilia, peace be with you. God bless you. Congratulations.
Michael, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Michael, peace be with you. Congratulations, Michael. God bless you. Catherine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Catherine, peace be with you. God bless you. Congratulations. Robert, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Robert, peace be with you. God bless you, Robert. Congratulations. Michael, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Michael, peace be with you. Congratulations, Michael. Mary, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mary, peace be with you. God bless you, Mary. Congratulations. Gianna, Gianna be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Gianna, peace be with you. Congratulations to you. Valentine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Valentine, peace be with you. Congratulations to you. Catherine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Catherine, peace be with you. God bless you, Catherine. Charity, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Charity, peace be with you. Congratulations, Charity. God bless you. Michael, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Michael, peace be with you. Congratulations, Michael. God bless you. Joanne. Joanne, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Joanne, peace be with you. Congratulations to you. God bless you. Jerome, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jerome, peace be with you. God bless you, Jerome. Congratulations. Maria, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Maria, peace be with you. God bless you, Maria. Congratulations. Cecilia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Cecilia, peace be with you. God bless you, Cecilia. Congratulations. Veronica, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Veronica, peace be with you. God bless you, Veronica. Congratulations. Joan, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Joan, peace be with you. God bless you, Joan. Congratulations. Augustine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Augustine, peace be with you. God bless you. Congratulations. Catherine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Catherine, peace be with you. God bless you. Congratulations. Sebastian, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Sebastian, peace be with you. God bless you, Sebastian. Congratulations. Sebastian, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
Sebastian, peace be with you. Congratulations to you. God bless you. Alexander, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Alexander, peace be with you. God bless you, Alexander. Congratulations. Rose, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Rose, peace be with you. God bless you, Rose. Congratulations. Mary, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mary, peace be with you. God bless you. Congratulations. And be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And peace be with you. Congratulations to you. God bless you. Margaret, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Margaret, peace be with you. God bless you, Margaret. Congratulations. Cecilia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Cecilia, peace be with you. God bless you. Congratulations. Matthew, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Matthew, peace be with you. God bless you, Matthew. Congratulations. Joan, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Joan, peace be with you. Congratulations, Joan. God bless you. Serafina, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Serafina, peace be with you. Congratulations to you. Catherine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Congratulations to you. God bless you. Lucy, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Lucy, peace be with you. Congratulations, Lucy. God bless you. Lazarus, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Lazarus, peace be with you. Congratulations to you, Lazarus. God bless you. Margaret, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Margaret, peace be with you. God bless you. Congratulations. You have two? Yeah. Rose, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Rose, peace be with you. Congratulations to you, Rose. God bless you. Luke, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Luke, peace be with you. Congratulations to you. God bless. Sebastian, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Sebastian, peace be with you. Congratulations. God bless. Helena, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Helena, peace be with you. God bless. Congratulations.
Joan, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Joan, peace be with you. God bless you. Congratulations. Edward, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Edward, peace be with you. Congratulations. God bless you. My friends, let's give a round of applause in thanksgiving to the Lord. May I ask you to stand for the prayer of the faithful. My friends, let us turn to God our Father and place before him our needs and our petitions. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God in union with Pope Francis and all the bishops, that God who gathers together by the Holy Spirit may help us grow in unity of faith and love until his Son returns in glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of our diocese, may we continue to pray for the openness to give over our entire lives to our Lord Jesus Christ, including all of our choices, our actions, our sufferings, and our joys, so that we may honor, love, and glorify his sacred heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For these sons and daughters of God, confirmed by the gift of the Spirit, that they give witness to Christ by lives built on faith and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For their parents and godparents who led them in faith, that by word and example they may always encourage them to follow the ways of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people of every race and nation, that they may acknowledge the one God as Father, and in the bond of communion seek his kingdom, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to the sacred priesthood and in the consecrated life, that the young people Christ is calling will hear his voice and will be given the grace to respond with courage and generosity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that the faithful departed may be brought to the peace of their eternal home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and willed that through them and their successors, the same Spirit be given to the faithful, listen to our prayer this evening and grant that your divine grace may spread through the hearts of all who believe in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, we pray together the prayer Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. I ask you to be seated for a moment. Bishop, on behalf of Monsignor Marty Ryan, the pastor of Our Lady of Grace, and on behalf of Father Peter Towsley, the pastor of Our Lady of Peace, who could not be here tonight, he is out of the country, and myself, I want to sincerely thank you for coming here to Stratford tonight 
to be the celebrant of this beautiful sacrament of confirmation. Thank you, Bishop. And I want to thank and ask him to stand up our Director of Discipleship for the Town of Stratford, Colin Petromali. Please stay. Thank you, Colin. And I want to thank all of our DREs here this evening with us and all of the catechists that gave so graciously and abundantly of their time to help bring these young people to this point tonight. Thank you. And I want to thank our beautiful music ministry tonight. Beautiful, John, thank you, thank you. And I want to thank the Honor Guard from the Knights of Columbus for being here this evening. Thank you. And I want to thank all of the sponsors here tonight for walking with these young people. Thank you. And now I'm going to ask all of the confirmands, please stand. I want to thank all of you for saying yes to Jesus. Please. Okay, my young friends, sit one last time. I, Father Damsky, thank you for those kind words. But I, on behalf of everyone here, the larger family of Stratford, I want to thank you, Monsignor Ryan, I want to thank you and Father Towsley, who is not able to be with us, for your spiritual fatherhood, for loving your people the way you do, walking with these young people and showing them such good priestly example. Let's give them a round of applause for their leadership. Okay, so my young friends, my last words are to you before we end. These men are your spiritual fathers, which makes me your spiritual grandfather. Okay. So please keep grandpa happy. Please do not make confirmation your graduation. You are not ending anything. You're just beginning to write the adventure of your life. And my friends, do we not pray for these 44 young people that these lives, their lives, will be long, healthy, and faithful to Jesus Christ to the end. Let's give them one last round of applause and encouragement. And if I may, allow me to do one bit of housekeeping. When the ceremony ends, I will remain behind. We will remove the kneeler and this chair, and we will take photos the same way you came for confirmation. I'm going to ask those who were confirmed to stand in the middle. I will be on one side, and your godmother or godfather will be on the other. And then for those who have cameras in the back, just line yourselves up in the middle aisle, and then we should be able to do this fairly quickly because you have, I'm sure, celebrations to go to, and I also have another event in Stanford I need to go to as well. May I ask you to stand for the final blessing? We bow our heads to the Lord. Confirm, O God, what you have brought about in us, and preserve in the hearts of the faithful the gifts of the Holy Spirit. May they never be ashamed to confess Christ crucified before the world. And by their love, may they ever fulfill his commands who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our Our recessional hymn, One Spirit, One Church. Believer. 
Still. 